Next on our list is the hip bone. Perhaps it is one of the most complicated bones to try to make full description using two-dimensional imaging as opposed to having a bone in your hands and trying to grasp all the, of its complex structure and curvatures. The hip bone is in Latin terms known as the os coxa or it could be also called the innominate bone which paradoxically means bone with no name and we just listed three different names the hip bone, the coxa or innominate bone. The one that we see here is the right-sided hip bone and it has been observed from anterior and lateral direction. The biggest opening that we have is obturator foramen and just above it is a huge articular socket for the head of the femur which is known as the acetabulum. Next to it is the left-sided hip bone which has been left flat on the table in order to show a little bit more of its internal aspect. The bone is composed of three parts and that's why our presentation will also address them individually one by one as the uppermost part of the bone is known as the ilium and then lower two parts that are inferior to the acetabulum and that surround the obturator foramen are known as the os pubis and os ischium. So three main parts, the ilium, the pubis and the ischium are coming together within the region of acetabulum. Let us now take a closer look to the hip bone. So the part that we see here is the ilium, this is the acetabulum, this is obturator foramen and now we're slowly rotating the bone trying to capture it practically from a straight anterior direction. For anyone who was not able to clearly identify these lower two parts, this is the pubic part and this is the ischium part. They come together within the region of acetabulum and lines of fusion between ilium, ischium and pubis are not visible. One of the most difficult things to start for some students is to get oriented, to know exactly how this bone sits within a human body. It is really complex and what adds to this complexity is that two different parts, the ilium versus ischium and pubis, are oriented practically in opposite anatomical directions. If I put my forceps to identify the axis of pubis together with ischium, one will realize very quickly that these bones are oriented so that they go slightly anteriorly and medially in order to meet the pubic bone from the opposite side. Contrary to the position of pubis and ischium, the uppermost part, the ilium, is oriented so it points anteriorly and laterally with its axis. So it looks like the bone is really like represented in all three anatomical planes. For that reason it is much easier to identify and to illustrate these three parts one by one and to address all the important anatomical features that this quite rich bone has to offer to us.